Brother Norman, do you have something on that you'd like to share? Well, I think what Frank did was he uh, probably got involved in, in this aspect of spiritual welfare before he was ready. You need a team. You can't do it alone. And so you have to train your people and get your people involved. So that it does, because the Bible talks about, you know, two, uh, we'll put, you know, about routing the enemy, about what two of you are on earth shall agree of one, any one thing it shall be done. So you, you can't go alone. And uh, I think that's why you got clobbered. And so you need to raise up a team of intercessors and warriors in your church. It doesn't have to be too many, three, four, five people, but if they're in one accord, you'll get the job done. I just want to tell you what happened in Guatemala recently. Our church, Christ Center in Guatemala City, has a native pastor named Peter Garcia, and he decided to uh, engage in some strategic spiritual warfare. Uh, and uh, some of you might be shocked, but I'm going to say, but they directed their attack against the Catholic Church, and they were ruling spirits over the Catholic Church in Guatemala. And now here in the United States, many believe that Catholicism is just another neat denomination. But to me, Catholicism is an apostate religious system. <laughs> but, but the Catholic Church has had uh, nearly full sway in Latin America for centuries, since the uh, days of the conquistadors to today. Now in Guatemala, they've lost a lot of ground because Guatemala has the highest percentage of born-again, spirit-filled people in any country of Latin America. It's estimated that 30-35% of the people of Guatemala are now born again Christians. What uh, have we had to do with that? I think, you know, eternity will reveal, you know, why this has happened. Uh, no one will give us the credit. We wouldn't claim it. But uh, I think when we came into deliverance in the 60s, we began to wage spiritual warfare without too much understanding. But... Uh, the power of oppression over the country, spiritually speaking, was lifted. And a lot of people that come to Guatemala, as soon as they get off the plane, they say they feel what a different spiritual atmosphere in Guatemala. Or when they cross the border between Mexico and Guatemala, they say the same thing. They feel a different spiritual atmosphere. And I think it's because Guatemala this does have a church that has learned to engage in spiritual warfare. Not only our church, many different churches. There's a man in that network, uh, his name is Harold Caballeros, and he's the pastor of El Shaddai Church. That church came out of the church that I used to pastor. It's, it's like a grandson of our, our the church, in Calvary Church in Guatemala City. So some of the stuff he knows, he learned indirectly uh, from us. And uh, But let me just tell you what Christ Center did recently. They decided that they were going to send teams to every Catholic church in the country to wage spiritual warfare. And so uh, they started with a cathedral where the archbishop has his seat. And then they went to the churches in, in the different provinces or departments or states. And they went to, uh, there's a big basilica in uh, eastern Guatemala called Esquipula, the black Christ of Esquipula. He's a ruling prince over Guatemala. He's a patron saint. And so they sent a team up there. They sent teams all over the country, even in the jungles, even in the Indian uh, tribes in the mountains. And they were, these people would go out three. Three people would form a team. One that would go into the church actually to anoint, you know, pour some oil and to, uh, rebuke and bind and also to plant a little banner. It was a small banner that says Jesus is Lord. And so, uh, they were received with a lot of suspicion. Many times, uh, people were wondering what they were doing there and they have to use be very careful, like Shirley mentioned when she went to Cuba, and uh, yet they covered tremendous territory all over the country, and uh, anointing uh, the churches, claiming this, you know, the destruction of the Catholic system, that religious system that has kept people bound for centuries, and uh, claiming the ground for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they finished this program, uh, they had a victory march through the cities, uh, through Guatemala City on a Sunday morning. All the leaders uh, took huge banners and paraded through some of the main streets, you know, celebrating uh, this triumph, you know, uh, the, the, the victory over all these demonic powers. We don't know what the results are going to be in the long term. We're sure that it had a tremendous impact upon the hearts and minds of the people of Guatemala. So now they're getting ready to go against spiritualism. 
you know, all the witchcraft centers and they're getting names and addresses and they're going to rise up against the, you know, the spiritualistic centers and witchcraft centers all over the country. And uh, there's about 80 uh, people involved in this outreach. And they're mature Christians and they're all submitted one to another and uh, the people that really know how to pray and they know how to intercede and they know how to engage in spiritual warfare. So we're going to see some tremendous results. The Lord gave us a promise close to 30 years ago that Guatemala would, by the end of this century, would have a, a Christian majority. Over 50% population would be, you know, they'd become spirit-filled. And we're believing that this is going to happen. Brother Norman, do you have something on that you'd like to share? Well, I think what Frank did was he uh, probably got involved in, in this aspect of